So here we're looking at independent events as part of our probability. Independent events occur when we carry out an event more than once. And what it means is that as I carry out each event, the previous event will not impact or have an influence on my second event. So think of that like you're flipping a coin. If I flip a coin three times and the first time I get ahead, the second time I get ahead, on my third attempt, the first and second flipping of that coin will not impact on me getting a head or a tail on that third flip of the coin. So we call that independent. They don't impact on each other. Now, I mentioned the keyword there, ahead and ahead and ahead. And in probability, we know means to multiply. So we're multiplying the probabilities here. So looking at this uh, question here down below, a fair dice is thrown three times, find the probability that there will be part one, no six, in part two, at least one six, part three, exactly one six, and then finally find also the probability that the three throws all show the same number. So there's four parts to this question. So let's take a look. So part one is asking us to find on the three throws of this dice, what's the probability that I get no sixes from those three throws. Now a dice, as we know, has six segments and on one of them is a, a six and on the other five, there are no sixes. So the probability of not getting a six is five out of six on my first throw and my second. So multiply by my second throw, which is also independent. So it's five out of six. And on my third throw, it's also going to be probability of five out of six for no sixes. And when I multiply them, I'm getting 125 over 216. If you want to turn that into a decimal, so it uh, might be easier to visualize what that stands for. It stands for 0 0.58, which is 58%. So if you have 58% chance of not getting a 6 when you throw a dice three times. So that's part one. Looking at part two now, it has those key words in it which are uh, at least. So think about this for a second. So at least one six. That means I can get one six, I can get two sixes, I can get three sixes, I can get four sixes, I can get five sixes, and I can get six sixes. So at least one six is the opposite of getting no sixes. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm taking the full probability, which is one, it's 100%, on my probability scale it's one, which is six over six, basically, and I'm going to subtract the probability of not getting a six. And that's my answer from part one, which is 125 over 216. And when I subtract 125 over 216 from one, I get 91 over 216. And as a decimal, it's 0.42. So about 42% of the time, I will get at least one six. Okay, so keyword there, at least means one minus no sixes. Part three now gets a little bit trickier. What's part three saying? Exactly one six. So again, don't forget that we are throwing our dice three times. So exactly one six, uh, you could have many uh, orders for this. So what you could have is I could have um, on my first throw, I could get a six. On the second throw, I could get something else. So I'm going to say other for a one, two, three, four, or five. And on my third row, I could get something else or something other. So that's one possible scenario that I could have. Or I could have uh, not a six on the first go, so something other than a six, followed by a six on my second row, and then on my third go, my non six again. So remember that you are looking for exactly one six, but that six can come on the first dice, or it could come on the second, or it could come on the third. So I'm going to do it out again. Or I could get something other than a six, something other than a six, and then finally on my third go, I get the six. Now I have to turn that into probability. So the probability of getting a six on a dice is one over six. Uh, and on my second dice, I get something else. So that's five out of six. And on my third dice, I get something other than a six, which is five out of six. So a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five. So it's a six and something else and something else. 
and meaning once again to multiply. So I'm putting a multiply symbol between those three fractions. Just gonna put them in a bracket. Now we have this or symbol. Remember that or in probability means to add. So it's a six, not a six, not a six, or plus the next scenario or the next scenario. So I have to go through all three of them separately. And when I fill them in, they're basically going to give me the same answer. It's five over six for other, multiplied by one out of six for getting my six on my second, and I get a other than a six on my third go. And I do that then for my third throw of the dice. So I'm throwing this dice three times, remember, so I can get a five out of six uh, and five out of six. So that counts for a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five. And then on my third go, I could get that famous six, so one out of six. Now when I multiply one sixth by five sixths by five sixths, I get 25 over 216. Now that's the same for all three, so it's plus 25 over 216, plus 25 over 216. So I get the same answer for all three scenarios. When I add them together then, we get 75 over 216. So when I add them together, 25 plus 25 plus 25 is giving me 75 all over 216. Now, if you want, you can simplify that down. That will simplify to 25 over 72. And if you want, you can turn it into a decimal, which is giving me um, 0.35. So about 35% of the time is when you would expect to get exactly one six when you roll those three dice. Okay, so that's part three. Looking at the final part here, so I'm gonna call it part four, so IV here, is asking us to now find the probability that the three throws all show the same number. So they all show the same number. So let's think of that for a second. So I'm throwing my dice again uh, three times, okay? Now, if I was to look at it like this, I'm gonna draw out my three dice. So this is my three goals of throwing the dice. Now, on that first throw of the dice, it doesn't matter what you get for the first goal because the question is asking that we get the same number on all three uh, goals of the dice. So my first throw of the dice is irrelevant as to the number that I get. If I get a one, happy days. If I get a two, three, four, five, six, it doesn't matter. So I don't need to put a probability into that first box. I'm just gonna put the number one, which stands for six over six. I can have any one of those numbers to land on that first dice. So that one there represents 100%, not the number one on a dice, but six over six. So I can get any number on that first dice. But now we're gonna look at the other two dice. If I get, let's assume I got a three on that first go of the dice, I then need to get the same answer on my second dice. So again, assume that I got a three here for my first dice. What's the probability now that I get a three on the second dice? It's going to be one sixth because there's only one three on the dice. And I roll that dice again. I again want to get a three, which is one over six. So what I'm basically doing is my first dice, just to recap on this, doesn't matter what you get, but the second and third go, I must get whatever I got on that first dice. And when I multiply one sixth by one sixth by one, I get one out of 36. Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.